thoughts? Bad about DFSP because of the honeycombing, but I don't know that it's bad. Yeah, you're right. There is some fat entrapment there, which is always good to think of DFSP, but it's great to remember a variety of things can entrap fat, but it's good to keep that in mind. The one thing from low power that makes me think maybe not DFSP is how like blue it is. It looks more cellular, but you know, we'll go closer. So it's hard. Sometimes at 2x, I'm, I'm right and I can get a subtle diagnosis and sometimes I'm spectacularly wrong from 2x which is why I don't just have a 2x objective on my scope. Maybe some people are good enough to get them all at 2x, but I usually like to go closer to confirm. But I always try at 2x. It's a great way to train your eye. It's a great way to realize things that can mimic each other that you might not think of otherwise. Okay. So the whole dermis is filled with something. And it's kind of a variety of different somethings in your cells. Oh, let me try again. It's a little bit washed out. That's better. What kind of cells are we looking at here? Any ideas? Well, I'll tell you this. When I see an infiltrate of cells in the dermis, look, a lot of the dermal collagen is still there. It's kind of altered, but so the cells are kind of filling in the spaces between the collagen. So right away, that makes me think of either hematopoietic process, like a lymphoproliferative process, or an inflammatory process, right? It makes me think of we've got some type of white blood cell, because white blood cells are don't stick to each other. They are able to float through the blood, and they're also able to just kind of fill in all the spaces in the tissue without displacing the normal structures, right? See, the normal and nexal structures are still kind of there. It's just everything's filled in around them. So right away, I wonder, is this like leukemia cutis or lymphoma, or is this some sort of histiocytic proliferation? And I think about histiocytes, especially because I see a sheet-like proliferation filling the dermis, and there's a lot of pale areas that are gray or pink, which means there's a lot of cytoplasm, and histiocytes tend to have a lot of cytoplasm. So right away, when I see a sheet with pale, gray, pink areas in it, I think we probably have a significant population of histiocytes here. This is a mixed population. We have histiocytes, but we also have other cell types too. So most of these pale cells are histiocytes. And if you look around, they most of them have kind of a bubbly, vacuolated cytoplasm. So kind of xanthomatous foam cells, histiocytes that are, are um, have a lot of lipid in their cytoplasm. We also have occasional eosinophils. And the darker small cells here that are just nuclei, those are lymphocytes mostly. There's a mitosis. Well, that's okay. Inflammatory things can have mitosis too. I think the nuclei look pretty bland. It's a little, some of them are kind of large, but they don't look markedly atypical to me. And this was a solitary uh, papule on the face of a child probably, but I don't know for sure. And there's more EOs. So foamy histiocytes, in sheets in the dermis with scattered EOs and some lymphs and a little bit of like spindled fibroblasts and fibrotic collagen in the background. What could we be thinking of? Maybe like granuloma faciali? Yes, that's one thought. The one thing we're missing for G facial is neutrophils. I feel like almost always when I see granuloma facial, we have uh, neutrophils. There will be some histiocytes too, but I feel like we get more neutrophils and lymphs, not quite so many. Um, Histiocytes, but I like that you thought of that because it fills the dermis just like G facial does. That's a great idea. But usually they'll be like this with scattered little neutrophils all over the place, which is a very unusual pattern of inflammation, I, I feel. Um, so that's a great thought. This is hard because it's missing the one feature that if I showed you, you guys would all be like, oh, easy, no problem. But that's why it's good to see cases like this because in real life, you sometimes you're missing the feature. Is it JXG? Very good. This is a juvenile xanthogranuloma, aka solitary xanthogranuloma, because they occur in adults sometimes. So I don't know that this was on a kid's face. Classically, this would be a reddish, yellow, brownish papular nodule on the face of a child, but they can also be in adults. And even though the name says solitary, um, they also can be multiple sometimes. So yeah, this is a xanthogranuloma. And sometimes they don't have Teuton giant cells. So I know that's the key. If I showed you the Teuton cell, you guys would be like, oh, Foam cells, EOs, and Teuton giant cells, no problem. But xanthogranulomas have a wide range of features. Sometimes they're histiocyte predominant. 
with little foam, sometimes they have a bunch of foam, sometimes they have a lot of lymphocytes, sometimes they have numerous EOs, sometimes they have just sheets of Teuton giant cells. Any of those combinations are fine. Sometimes they become very fibrotic and start looking like dermatofibroma. So if you think it's a DF, but you start seeing EOs and Teuton cells and it's the face of a kid, probably xanthogranuloma. If you think it looks like a xanthoma, but it's got areas with a lot more lymphs and some EOs, probably a xanthogranuloma. So it's a, it's a lesion that can have really a bunch of, a range of different morphologies, depending on how much of each component is present. So it's good to know that you can get ones like this that don't have two giant cells.